Hello. It's time for the July Basho, and we're back with our bolder -er predictions in our hottest episode yet. Hotter because it's like 104 frickin' degrees in Utah. So, electrolyte throw. Oh god. Hello and welcome back to the dojo here on Mr. J Wag's channel. Perhaps you have noticed the hair is a bit darker. It has been dyed in anticipation of my upcoming performance of Dewey Finn in School of Rock here in lovely Ivins, Utah. It is lovely but very, very hot. Uh, if you're interested at all in seeing the show, if you're in the Southwest, we'd love to see you. I'll put the information right down there. Go ahead and check it out. We're going to start this one with a sumo shout out. One of my very favorite rikishi, Ikioi, has just gone in Thai. Uh, he had a very long and storied career, 16 years in sumo, 44 tournaments in the top division, ended up making Seki Wake, uh, he had five Kinboshi, two against Hakuho, and let us not forget the most lovely singing voice in all of sumo. He'd been suffering through some injuries, well, for a long time, but he had finally gone Kyujo for the very first time about three tournaments ago. Uh, he has ended up down in Sandanme, he's decided to hang it up. And yeah, we're going to miss him, but he did get his elder stock, so we will see him as Kasugayama Oyakata. So keep the lookout for him once he's got his hair cut, and if you visit the karaoke bars at all in Japan. <laughs> Sumo shout out. It's also time for Hagaki Oi, our recurring segment where I answer questions from you. The people. The question, which I have received here in comments on this channel and when I was uh, working on Jason's channel, subbing in for him a few basho ago, and that question is, uh, you don't know how to speak Japanese, do you? No, no I don't. Uh, I grew up in California, I took a bunch of Spanish. When I was in high school, I have only learned the Japanese I know by working at a sushi restaurant for five years that was owned by a Korean family, so that should tell you about how accurate my Japanese is. I do want to get this right, so please, please, please keep giving me notes in the comments, but do make sure that if you do give me a note on pronunciation, you are in fact correct, because that has happened once someone corrected me and then I found out later I had it right the whole time. So if any of you have any questions for me about sumo, about, about the show, about anything else I'm doing, please hit me up in the comments for Hagakiyoi, and perhaps you next time will be able to, I, I won't say pick the flannel because it's way too hot here for that, but you will get the Mr. J-Wag song of your choice and a sumo shout. Boulder prediction number one, and it's not that bold, but I think it needs to be said. Hakuho is not going to be a factor in this basho. Uh, I just think we are at the point where his technique, his mind games, the way he enters the ring, the mystique of Hakuho is almost gone. He's at the point right now where he doesn't have his fastball anymore. He doesn't even have a knuckleball to throw anymore. I would be very, very surprised if he makes it all 15 days. But if he does make it all 15 days, I don't think he's going to be in contention on day 15. I do, in fact, think this will be Hakuho's final basho. This is the greatest sumo wrestler of all time, and we get to see him in action maybe a few more times, so I'm just going to enjoy it. Let's check out that dojo Eri one more time. Believe me, nothing would make me happier than vintage Hakuho going up against Terra Fuji on the final day. I just don't see how a guy who hasn't completed a basho in a year and has continually reported new and fresh injuries is going to somehow come together for 15 days of elite sumo. Prediction number two. Both of our current Seki Wake will not be Ozeki in the next tournament, but they are going to continue their Ozeki runs. So Takiyasu has 20 wins in his last two tournaments, and Matakiyumi has 18 wins in his last two tournaments. I think both of them are going to get double-digit wins and keep on these Ozeki runs they are on. I just don't think they're going to get him this tournament. As I've said before, Takiyasu would take him a 13-win tournament at this point to get to the 33 wins, which is the guideline. And he's never done that. And for Matakiyumi, he has done that. In fact, I think he did it at Nagoya. I just don't see it happening in this band's game, and Takeyumi busting out and having a big surprise unless a bunch of people above him get hurt. Let's hope not. My sumo three-way parlay is for three youngsters in sumo who I think are all going to get Kachikoshi this tournament. Onosho, Hoshoryu, and Ura. Onosho, I think he's been sort of in that middle in place for a bit, and uh, I think he's ranked low enough he's not going to have one of those, like, 
two and thirteens that he has up in the joy. He's at Maegashira six, so I think this time he's going to give us a Kachikoshi and possibly at the end of the tournament get bumped up into the joy for some spoiler action. Hoshoryu has surprised me a great deal. Uh, I've been thinking he's going to need to bulk up to really be a, a consistent wrestler in the top division, but uh, he seemed to be doing very well. I think he may just need a, a little bit more bulk and a bit more experience against these top rankers, and he'll be in line for Sanyaku slot maybe next year. And of course, Ura! Ura's my absolute favorite. He is back from Jurio and two horrible, horrible knee injuries. So let's hope he's got some of that Terra no Fuji action going on and he's just going to keep on going with Maka Uchi and give us an amazing tournament, not just with winning records, but with that Ura style we love so much. Prediction number four, and this is also a sad one. I don't think Tochi Notion's gonna last very much longer. In fact, my bolder prediction is that this is going to be his last tournament in the Makauchi division. He just has not been the same wrestler since his Ozeki days, which I might remind you was back in 2018. In fact, 2018 was the last time he had two Kachikoshi in a row. And since he lost his Ozeki rank, he's only gotten two Kachikoshi at all. He's just been managed to sort of slowly work his way down the Banzuke. He's had a little bit of Banzuke luck with some of the rankings, but that knee is not healing anytime soon. Uh, and I just don't think he has enough strength and I don't think he has enough sort of nonsense sumo left in him to stay in the top division. I have him pegged for five or fewer wins in this tournament. And again, I'd really love to be wrong about this one, but let's enjoy the big man while we still have him. And here is our recurring segment, which way are we going? Now this is a segment where we discuss wrestlers who this tournament is, I think, going to be sort of pivotal in deciding which way they're going to go, up or down. And the ones I'm going to focus on are Maegashira's 1 and 2. Endo, Daesho, Takanosho, and Ichi Nojo. Now all of these wrestlers are relatively young, except for Endo, he's 30, but all the other ones are in their 20s. And all of them have spent at least four tournaments up in the Sanyaku. But now they're back in Maegashira. Daesho recently won a tournament. Endo just had a great tournament. Ichi Nojo has two Junyushos to his name, and Takanosho was just hanging out at Sakewake for four tournaments. Now, who among these guys is going to be able to make another Sanyaku push? I mean, Endo has, has disappointed me a great many times. Uh, Daesho just seems too inconsistent to be able to hang out in the Sanyaku for any extended period of time. Takanosho has the ticking time bomb of the knee, and he's also never had, like, a 13-win tournament or anything where we'd look at him and say, wow, this guy's in contention. Oddly enough, I think the most consistent one is going to be Ichi Nojo, and if he just keeps getting 8 wins, 9 wins, which it seems like he's been doing for the past year, he's gonna end up back at Komasubi pretty soon. I mean, the real question is, in this Banzuke, where we don't have a Yokozuna, for all intents and purposes. Guys like Takara Fuji are ending up in the Joy Jin regularly. Right now we have like Kotoweko jumped up into the Joy Jin. And I don't think those guys would be making it past mid Maegashira if we had, say, the Banzuke we had three years ago. So in this depleted Banzuke, do any of these guys have a shot? Let me know in the comments. But I don't feel that confident about any of these guys to make a bolder prediction, so we're gonna take this tournament to find out which way we go. And my fifth bold prediction is that we are going to have two of our Sanyaku, other than Hakuho, get Make Koshi in this tournament. I think it's going to be Meisei, the new Komasubi, and our favorite Ozeki, Shodai. As I've said before, Shodai tends to go one-on, one-off recently, and this seems to be an off one. His sumo is so dependent on the timing of his Tachiai, and it just seems like he hasn't been able to keep it at that sort of razor's edge of timing that, re re that he requires to really get that Tachiai in full working formation like he did last year. Shodai's getting a little bit older, it seems like some people are starting to figure him out a bit. Let's see how long he can stay at Ozeki, but I think after this tournament he is going to be caught up on. Now is interesting, I do think in the long term he will be sort of a Sanyaku regular for at least a year or so, but in this tournament I just don't think he has the experience in the upper divisions. I think he got a little bit lucky in the last tournament with a few of his wins, beat a couple people I was very surprised to see him beat, and I don't think he's going to be quite as successful this time around. I think he's going to get 6-7, but I don't think he's going to get all the way to 8. And finally, the big prediction. Now, it's not that bold, but I think you're going to like it. 
Tara Nafuji gets the Yusho and makes Yokozuna. I say this not just because he's won the last two and he's clearly the most dominant Rikishi right now, although that is a very good reason. I say this because of all the people in the Sanyaku, he's shown the most upward curve of learning. I mentioned a few bolder predictions before that every contender right now has a path to three losses. Well, Tara Nafuji seems to have like hit the dohyo real hard and figured out how to beat a lot of these guys. In the last tournament, he beat Onosho, Takeyasu, Takanosho, and Takakesho, if we count the playoff. And if you look at Tara Nafuji's last tournament, uh, with a little bit of luck, he could have been easily 14 and one. There was only one match where he was clearly out wrestled, in my opinion, that was Takakesho on day 15. So if we're talking about the guy who's already got the most imposing sumo presence, the best like resting stank face in the history of sumo, and this much momentum behind him, and as long as his knees are holding up, which as I said before, they appear to be, and he's been much more consistently in the ring than a lot of other rikishi I could name. Takakesho, Takayasu, Hakuho. So my bolder prediction is he gets 13-2 and two and faces Takakesho in a playoff and beats him. And then Terra Nafuji will get his Yokozuna rope. Thank you for joining us here on the Dojo. Again, I apologize that it's taken me so long to get these episodes out. I'm employed now. Yeah, I know, it feels weird to me too, but that's taking up a lot of my time. There is a shadow of Hakuho in the hopper right now. I'm just finishing up the graphics on it because I want it to be as good as I can get it for you, my lovely fan. Keep an eye out for the quick strikes. Uh, I'm very excited about the Basho. I can't wait to hear what you all are thinking of it. So everyone stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and I will see you next time on the Doe Hill. <laughs>